go. Hey, my name is William. Welcome back to the Green Lizard USA YouTube channel. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how I'm going to redesign this boat. It still works just fine. I can do all the steering and everything I need to do. But I have a vision for more of a center console on the back where I will be for all the operations. And I also want to install an electric start on both pumps so I don't have to turn around and yank that recoil starter every time. So this is just going to be a quick walkthrough. I have, a, I have three different electric starts. I'll install one on both both pumps and then I'll keep one for spare parts just in case anything goes wrong. I uh, bought these off of eBay. Uh, they're pretty cheap. I'll uh, put the price of what, what it was on the screen, but uh, it should be a pretty easy install and we'll see how it goes. All right, so the first step, we need to take everything out of the box and see what we have to work with. So let's get this opened up and see what we have. All right, looks like everything's shipped well packaged. Uh, everything's bubble wrapped. Looks like we have the little piece that the key goes in. We have the ignition assembly. Uh, this feels pretty heavy. It's probably the starter. Let's see here. Oh, that's definitely the flywheel. We have the magnet and a new engine cover. All right, let's get this stuff opened up. All right, so this first item is the ignition. You can see there is a spot for a key and there's an off, run, and start position. You also have a circuit protector built in. Looks like maybe this could get tripped and you could reset it. You get a bag of connecting hardware. It's really not much, uh, just a few new pieces that probably replace existing components or uh, bolt through some existing holes. You get your uh, new flywheel, which is geared so it can accept the teeth from the starter, which is sitting over there. You can see the magnets inside. And that's about it on that piece. And here's the magnet that will be attached right on the outside of the flywheel. And there's probably a, a standard spacing that I need to have between the magnet and the flywheel. Probably about a business card's thickness. And then here's the starter. It's not very large. Uh, I can probably almost cover it with two hands. It's about half the size of one you'd find in a car and a lot smaller than one you'd see in a large pickup. That'd be about the size of a, I don't know, a container of oatmeal, oats or something. And there you can see the, the little gears, the teeth that will engage when you fire up the starter. There's a little solenoid right here that talks to the motor and basically these that little gear just pops out so it engages with the flywheel and when it's done starting it, it pops back in so that's how you don't grind the gears and then here's the last piece pretty uh, self-explanatory you just get a new flywheel cover because you can see the ones that are that are on them right now are a little different um, they're only accommodating the recoil starter and once you put all the other components on there it's going to need a larger shroud so and before we really start tearing everything apart i need to take off this uh, connecting rod that ties the two throttles together i need to get my fishing rods and cooler and a little toolbox out of the way so i have room to work but we'll get that cleaned up and then we'll start pulling these apart So when I built this boat, I had everything that I added to the boat added with the same hardware. So I have the same quarter 20 bolt that I used to plug up any holes that I drilled in the boat with a little washer. And everywhere I've connected anything like my uh, controls for the boat and even these linkages, 
it's the same bolt everywhere. So all I gotta do is grab a 7 16 open end wrench and my Allen wrench, which should be in here. There we go. And it's literally two tools to do the job. So I started the disassembly by removing the two nuts that attached the air box to the front of the carburetor. Went ahead and did it on both engines at the same time and then got my socket set out and started removing the recoil starter off the front of the flywheel. And then removed the flywheel cover and uh, set that off to the side and removed the kill switch on the side. Really didn't know what I was doing, so I was just winging it as I went. So once I finished getting the covers off both the engines, I started looking at how I was gonna take the little fan and flywheels off. Didn't know what I was doing, but I was trying. Then I took off the fans. And here I attempt to take off the flywheels, but it was really difficult and I ended up stopping the camera so I could really wrap on it. All right, so taking the flywheels off kind of gave me a bit of a fit, but I finally got them off. I had to stop the camera because it got a little out of hand, but uh, also had to clean up the garage a little bit. I was tripping over myself while I was trying to work, so I figured I should just take a minute and clean up the garage and then get back to work. So go ahead and get these uncovered. I have them covered up with t-shirts just to keep bugs and critters from crawling inside since the uh, front side of the carburetor is open. But anyway, we'll get back at it and uh, let's keep going. So once you get the flywheel off, this is what it looks like. You can see on the right hand side, I've already installed the starter. It's the thing with the little gear, but this is what it looks like once you get everything off. So putting everything back together was a lot easier than taking it apart. All I had to do was slide the new flywheel with the gears over the shaft, put the fan on and that little metal cuff looking thing that the recoil starter engages with and then Nut it all together, and that was it. All right, so that took some major doing, and I had some other wiring here from where I would rigged up my emergency pull-away kill switches and manual kill switches. So I uh, didn't want to quite film all the process here because I think it might be a little bit different for you. But uh, here we go. Let's take a let's take a try at it. Put it in the run, and then got my batteries hooked up, come to the starter, got everything wired together, and let's, see, let's put the gas on. Put it start, choke it back a little bit. Here we go. Well, that's a nice, powerful start. I uh, just need to play with the choke a little bit and I'm sure it'll pop. So at this point, the engine was running, but I couldn't turn off the key, the kill switch didn't work, and the pull-away switch didn't work. So I looked behind, tried to figure out what was happening, and looked for a way to ground it out. 
All right, I hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, like I said, I had some issues with my wiring apparently at the end because I couldn't get the engine to actually cut off. It would start just fine. So I thought I had wired it properly, but when I turned the key in the off position, the engine kept running. So I think it was probably a grounding issue uh, based on what I'd read online, but I called up my dad who's an electrical engineer and he came over tonight and we looked at it and couldn't quite figure out what I'd done wrong before because I'd already taken the wires back apart, but uh, he gave me a quick crash course on uh, electrical design or really I guess your, uh, your electrical schematic. So I'll do a quick run through in another video talking about this stuff which I know very little about, but apparently we have the right uh, information on the screen because this did not come with the kit. You buy the kit from eBay, uh, it comes from a manufacturer overseas with no instructions, no wiring diagram, so you're on your own. And if you wanna do any extra switches or kill switches or anything else, um, you're gonna need something like this to know what to do, so. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, keep on coming back to Green Lizard USA. Thanks.